Tuesday. As always, gentlemen, thank you for the flexibility. Of course. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. It's a real lame one. Thursday, I've got a haircut. So, you know, and it is what it is. We do anything, we do anything special or just cleaning it up? Uh, you know, so, jeez, um, about this time of year, every year I shave it off and just go like very, very low. Um, but there's always like a time, like, you know, once I do that, I basically have to get it cut like once a week, right? Like her every 10 days at a max. Thanks. And, uh, there always comes a time where that just doesn't fit the schedule. And then I miss it like three times in a row and I'm like, fuck it, might as well just grow it out. Right. And, uh, that's, and I grew it all the way out. And then like my daughter in particular hates it when my hair is really low, which doesn't really matter to me for the most part, but it is always awkward when your daughter tells you, you don't look like her father. So that's always fun. Um, so I kind of like just went with it. I just, I just stuck with it this time. And now I'm actually seeing like, I usually just went straight to a barber and they would like take care of everything. I had a phenomenal barber. He still is phenomenal. But then Stacy's like, just go see my lady. And I was like, all right. So now I go to like this real stylist thing. And it's really not my thing, guys. I'm going to be honest with you, but it is super fucking relaxing. Like, it's really nice. Like, it's fire. You can't, you can't lie. It's fire. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 is nice nice. Nice. Hey, do you want a glass of wine? Yeah. No. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, I've been getting my hair cut like every single like week pretty much. It, more when I was younger it was more consistent because my dad just really wanted us to keep our hair shaped up. But it wasn't until college when I went to what was that, two hundred and like twenty fifth street, like two hundred sixteenth street to go get our hair cut by like some dudes that didn't even speak English and they're Dominicans and they would like put the hot towel on my face and like get a face scrub and wash my face and like put some vibrating things on the back of their hand so it feels like some scrub like just that little bit of pampering is just like nah I'd, I'd rather go with for that. how much <laughs> Wait, for how much tell them how much 20 bucks 20 bucks. So, you just said my man has always been my problem with it. I'm like, all right, Stacy, you do different things to your hair. I totally understand. Like, pay the price, whatever you want. Like, don't mess with it. But from my standpoint, I'm like, I'm not. Nah, you get your hair cut once a year, though. For, <laughs> no, you got a real healthy head of hair, my friend. Yeah, I really got to do much. <laughs> we don't get hair, you know? like every week. Right. So, like yeah, every week. Don't. It does add up, but this guy, I mean, this is like every six, this is, this is just five weeks old, like at this point. And like, it's like crazy, you know, like I'm going to work out after this, but I mean, this to the nose of it was wet. It's like out of control on top of that guys, the amount of gel we have, like, it's like, it's like 75 cents of gel a day. That's too much. Like, that's not necessary. No. Cause like the real answer to all of this, we're really capping because right. Since COVID, <laughs> I taught myself how to cut my hair. Because, like, I got kind of beast, and I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. So I started just, you know what I'm saying? And then I just got better at it. I got better tools. And now I just cut my hair. And my barber, went, like, a year ago now at this point, he hit me with, I, he had been my barber for, like, five years from, like, Oh, you hurt my in high school. He hurt my feelings. I needed to go. <laughs> I needed to go on a photo shoot to shoot avant garde, and he told me, "You can't come in for the next two weeks." I said, "That's a joke." <laughs> like, understand this situation real quick. Blah blah blah. He said, "No." So I said, "Well, business is business. There are no friendships." <laughs> Right. I haven't seen him since. Yeah, when we yeah, I've been cut my own hair. I've been getting real nice with it. You know what I'm saying? She got the beard. You know what I'm saying? We got a little shot. You really nail it. No, but when honey, we lived in Boston and I couldn't afford that shit. So I shamed it all myself. It was such a mess. Like it's everywhere for like five years he did it. And then like even with this, every once in a while, Stacy will just like trim it up for me. Like she's good enough with that as well. But like 
I get the D Rose braids. Oh, <laughs> Yo, that'd be fire though, just for one time in your life. Just for one time. That's where I'm at. Me, I've actually had this conversation. Some people in the household have been aligned with me. But yeah, I would absolutely. <laughs> he said, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I see it. I see it. Oh, you got it. Rock it. No, you could pull it off. <laughs> This 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 gives me ammo. I'm I'll send the clip once we get it. So of course. Yeah. <laughs> How have you guys been? We've been good. We've been good. You let go. Oh, it's your boy LeBron yeah. is uh yeah. looking good right now, man. Or the well, the Lakers in general are yeah, looking that good. Was, yeah, the Lakers <laughs> looking real good. Lakers looking real good. Who knew freaking Oh no! I can't believe no. outside of Boston. Actually, like the connection this year is different. Like I love basketball. I always watch the playoffs. But to like have been in the facility and met the players, and now they're like literally got, uh, about to go win the championship. It's a different level of like fan. It's too hard. I'm still down. Still down in a series. I mean, I feel like the way books playing right now. If they pull that together, that could be amazing. But I get, I get your mentality and your sentiment. And like that's, that's got to feel good. It's like you're a part of it, part of the process. You know. No, yeah. Mm. Book, book is playing like this for whatever reason i thought he was like 28 or 29 I, when they said he was 26 the other day i was like good lord man like still so much so much life in general that nba life left in him too like really? when he's playing right now it'll be like perfect if kd decides to stay in a place and not kd himself it will be perfect in the sense of like yo i will help guide this young man to become you so to speak right like this is your passing of the torch properly but it's uh it's it's been it's been fun to watch the playoffs this year that's for sure especially seeing what the lakers who you know barely made it in and i guess even the warriors to some extent but as long as like Nobody out of the East wins. I'm I'm probably all right with it. I'd be okay in Philly, but I'm not. I don't. I don't need any. No way. So, but I mean, the Celtics are aren't looking too great either. So, no. <laughs> I honestly think whoever wins the West is gonna win. But I think it's funny what you said. It's hard for KD not to KD himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like I think KD should drop his own brush. That should be KG's product, dude. But like, and it'd, be, it'd be like the biggest ironic like joke product, but people would buy it. I promise you, people. That's would buy it. so funny, bro. <laughs> Just you and he went like down. He went he was in the fourth quarter. He drove down, like, get kind of the failing, not knock on the bounds, like, yo, that bald spot is really You know, right, you know, the right camera now. angle is too high now. What's up with this black yeah. camera angle? They need the draw. I'm like, using that draw. No, it's not good. <laughs> it's really exposing them, bro. No, because I saw the same thing, bro. Like, when I said that, I was like, I'm imagining that, and I was like, bro, you just need, like... It's just obvious he never, like, was exposed to one. <laughs> like, the, like, the, like, the girls in my high school that, like, I was brushing my hair and they were like, is that a horse's brush? And I was like, that's foul. <laughs> like, whatever. As I feel like Katie would say the same thing. <laughs> and, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but he's balling, but he's balling. Shout out to Sun. No, because that's some KD only cares about who. KD had a million dollars, lost it because Crypto Tank didn't care, still dropped 40. Like, <laughs> game is game, right? <laughs> you know, that's facts. Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> Does KD still drop his own shoe? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Dude, no, we we're talking that. about the best. I feel like they're not as like. Shoes. Some of my favorite basketball shoes ever were the KD Four. Right, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but those were like the high school Johns, like when we were like in middle school, high school. I'm talking about like I feel like recently they just haven't been as 
popping in the culture. Is that just me? Oh, I have a oh. lot of theories on this. Uh, but like KD two through, I'd say KD two through five, especially the two were really special product. I mean, it was really good shoes. But there's been such a monumental shift in Nike of how, in my view, of how they approach product and even how they create it. I mean, I'm lucky enough to have some very good friends on the inside. They've completely redone everything since the. I don't know if we want to go as far as calling it a scandal. I guess I'd call it a scandal. But since the Mark Parker issue and, and him going out, I mean, it took... When when Mark fell from Nike, it took, like, the entire leadership team out, and they overhauled it. Now, I'm not saying that's negative or positive in any way. Obviously, one man's loss is another man's gain, so other leaders got to come up. But it completely changed the entire leadership organization. So I don't believe the company is focused on the level of product that you just talked about, to be honest with you. It's more like, I hate to say it, but you look at everything always ties back to some piece of nostalgia or some past piece when you look at it. Like the, to answer your question, though, is the, the 16, they just like, they didn't launch it. You can't go buy it yet, but they launched it for him. Uh, and made it like right before the first round of the playoffs. So it, they took the basically the last line of the penny two and put it on the side of it and made a. They're gonna call it a low top, but it's like a low. It's like a mid a mid low, and right. you know it's like everything. It's just brand. That's all it is. Yeah, uh, I'm. I remember just like almost like sixty percent of dudes at my school would rock KDs with jeans to school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had all those different colorways and the flower patterns and the, you know what I'm saying, and the loud colors, and people really like that. I just feel like it hasn't. No. Was was just, like, when when we were in middle school, like, basketball shoes were it. Right. Like, you wore basketball shoes with, you could wear basketball shoes with, you could wear LeBron's with a suit mm-hmm. and be hard. What year are you in middle school, like? Well, what year? School is like 2012 to 2014. Yeah. So for... I think there's a few things. Like, I think there's so much that's changed. I was actually... Or actually 2010 to 2012. Because I remember I moved in sixth grade. So yeah, that was 2010. So you're like LeBron, like 12 through 15, the KD4. I mean, LeBron 10. And, then, well, and the 10, like, when you look at it, it still had that element that was, like, yeah. Well, oh, shit. Even the Soldier 10 was amazing. But um, all the, I remember just all these colorways, man. All these, like, floral. <laughs> like, but this coral, is like what they like, damned themselves, guys, is that, like, yeah. like 16 to 18 colorways a shoe now. And it's, like, it's in Yeah, it's just no coherency. There's not enough story behind each one. They're just quarters now. Cork. Cork. Yeah, the cork was the best one. Bottom of the left. There you go. Uh, this might have subliminally inspired the gold cork that, like, we do now. On the, on the yeah. bottom. Because, like... You know, that is such a great shoe. Uh, I don't know. Just kind of look at, like, the era now, and you see, like... So much change, though. Like, I guess, like, what, what I'm trying to get at is, like, era I grew up in. So middle school for me is Jordan 12, 13, and 14, right? So 97, or, yeah, 96, 97, 98. And when you look at that, like, that stuff could truly be worn, like, off court and, like, done in a different way. The other part to remember with this is, like, the 12. The 12 was the first Jordan to have five colorways. Like, it went white, varsity, red. Went People now call the cherry, which makes no sense to me. But anyway, white, varsity, red. Black, white, stacky. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> this is Nike ID. It's been varsity red. Anyways. The obsidian pair, the black, white, like, flip, and then the black, red commonly known as like the flu game like that was like that first era of like going over the top but the other part was is like those athletes were still wearing dress shoes to like every game like they were still wearing cut and sew leather and everything like yeah. that 
and now big boxes I mean, do they really buy a dress shoe anymore like it's very rare shit going into prada and, and gucci a few weeks ago like there's no like that's what you went to them for was that cut and sew leather product and now they're like overly like sneaker like they're they're like more sneaker than the sneaker brands and uh it's just fascinating to watch like like so you're touching on probably probably still some of the that still hits both sides like jerry nailed this right like he's nailed shame oh my gosh the indina stuff looks pretty good too i mean it's yeah, not like i'm not mad at it at all yeah but it's solid and it's and it's him good shape right yeah. it's like good shape good finish the product i mean it's just fucking beautiful Look up the uh, the air raid version of this, uh, the Fear of God air raid or whatever you call it, because it's like it's the perfect example of um, of how. I mean, it's a Nike blazer with straps, but you couldn't have made the Nike really? blazer that way, you know. Right. Really. Oh. No, these are shit. These are. I've been like certain or because I remember yeah. these. These are more like the Adidas ones. I should cop mm -hmm. some of these because, like, I always feel like I want to invest. I would want my favorite designers to invest in my art. And I think about that. And so, or like, and I, if I'm to meet like Jerry and whatever, like, to genuinely like have the pieces that I love that he's made. And so, yeah. Like, you're talking about something that like, I kind of live my life by. It's like, I'd rather support the independent person that has like like obviously this isn't independent but it was his passion it was his touch that made that happen like, i'm a big 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 proponent of supporting the people that like you know their heart and soul went into it <clears throat> these aren't going for as much as they weren't once were like i've got a few of them i've saved on grail well honestly if you wore these in the wild like you don't even see these in the wild. Like no, the wars. I've never like, seen these in the wild. They're insane. I yeah, should go these. They're really cool. Are you in the kids' version? Why do they have stuff all the way down the like Wait, here it is. This is StockX. Versus size. 370. Hmm. Bro, come on. Yeah, we might have to cop these. Don't grailed, man. You'll find like a pair that's barely been worn. I like goat a lot too. I'll be real. I'm a big fan of goat. But we were talking about supporting the online marketplaces because, like, nice. one of the things I want to do with different NY is like we have the art on here, but we sell like other curated, just like stuff. I want this to become a marketplace, but not to the point of where it's like the goat or the grailed or anything like that. It's like there's like when these were here, it was like, there's like one in like one size and it's there for two seconds. Jerry, it's still blue people. Yeah. And it's like, and it's, but it's like so curated to the store. It's like not a marketplace where like people can put what they want on there. It's just like what we choose from other brands. Kith does that, but like they have like way more of like a retail corporate uh, to, yeah. to it yeah it is on the hundreds was actually the first street where and i remember doing that their santa monica store when they opened up their santa monica store they focused on putting other brands in there as well It'd be like their friends i i don't even know if the santa monica store is still open to be honest with you but the last time i was in there they had departed that path pretty quick uh, and it was just all hundreds product, but I like the notion of like it being a curated thing. Like, in fact, there's some dudes that I was talking about that I was thinking about talking with you guys and getting on here, but like just up the road from me is Flint uh, about 20. So I'm closer to Flint than I am Detroit, but it's about 25 minutes, like up the road. And they just opened up, um, uh, a store just opened up there called Bauhaus and, uh, it's fascinating because obviously real estate and other stuff is wildly available to you up there a little bit more than in other metropolitan, but they have this 
beautiful sneaker boutique. It actually reminds me of uh, the original Rivington Club by A Life. And uh, so they've got that set up, but then they bought the upstairs piece above them too. And they have a set up as like a sewing room and they do like a lot of outreach with like local youth and are doing, you know, custom created footwear and apparel and other pieces like that. But what I like about their story is there's obviously that connection to it, but the other part is that it like, it's more than just a store at that point. Like it becomes this curated piece to what they do. And because they're not massive and it's their only store, like they, they sell, they sell fear of God. They sell rude. They sell a few other pieces to it, but it's really curated to know who their consumer base is. Right. Like they're not going to go and necessarily buy every piece out of the collection, but they buy the pieces because they know the customers that are coming in. And I, I like that experience far more than I do going into a place that just has everything, you know? What's so much? It's the, the curation is the key. Curation is the key. You have an opinion then. You have a vision. A lot of people don't have a finished vision. And that, that I always struggle with that. I think that's the thing, because it's like, because we're basically telling you, like, this is, this stuff is cool. But if we just put everything, then it's like, well, this is everything. Right. I think that's actually become the hard part of like e-commerce, like where, like, so for instance, obviously everybody's struggling to sell product for a couple of reasons. I don't necessarily believe it's because of the inflation and, and tie down on, uh, maybe inflation's a part of it, but basically everybody overstocked their product, right? Because they got so scared of what happened during COVID and not getting product in. So everybody's like oversupplied and overstocked. So now you have like every brand just has a massive amount of product. But anyway, Sense like is doing a private sale today for like, I'm sure everyone's on sale. Everyone's no. on sale. Wait, 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 can we, Essence? No, Sense, SS. I don't know. How are you pronouncing it? We pronounce it as the S S E N S E. We pronounce it as And I believe they pronounce it as it's just. Well, that's Well, they're doing it. I'm the one. I don't want to make sure we're talking about the same. Because, like, right. yeah. I think there's probably another company called Sense, I think. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful Canadian brand, though, right? Like, Canadian yeah, awesome. establishment, like, wonderful what they do. There's got to be 10,000 brands on that site. I got it, my Elliot yeah. Mill bag from there. I'm oh, all, I, the first thing I remember from them was this uh, Issy Miyake that I keep my I got markers in it for a while. Now I keep if my, you know, like, if you're, if you're like a pro at using e-commerce sites and how to just filter your way through stuff it's a great site i love essence but i definitely get what you're saying there's if you just go on there as a regular person you're like oh my god there's yeah it's super i mean the photography is beautiful the storytelling is beautiful it's amazing like i love it as it but like it's an example of like what should be a boutique but if that thing was a real place it would be bigger than the nike spot and so like it would be 100 percent it would be like it would be Selfridges times ten. Yeah. But it's in Canada though. And that's Montreal. Is that really Canada? I mean it's Montreal. Right. You know? But yeah. It's not it's not right. New York. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so but we we have other cool topics because we can get we can do it. I do have an eleven today, I will be honest. But yeah. Hit me. What do you what's on your mind? Now we get a lot. So first, I found a way, I think, to be more healthy that I want to share. And it has to do with, it's almost like a third door of health. So I learned that there is the main contributor that we don't focus on to our health is oxidative stress. And like, how, like, do we take supplements of like antioxidants? Not really. Even though I take like vitamins and we can take like vitamin C and stuff like that. I found like the most powerful antioxidant as a supplement. And 
it grows from algae. And so basically it's just like an organic way to kind of like holistically keep your cells regenerating at their highest level. Called I call it special A. Because it has like a wild like scientific name. But yeah. I'll uh I'll uh So you you've started taking it already? Yeah. How have you was it like uh is it a build up? Did you feel all the benefits kind of quickly? Like where and what what's like some of the main gains you've had out of it? Not necessarily immediately, but what have you noticed that's different? Yeah, so you know, I'm gonna pull up this is a good this is a good explanation. Should have grabbed my shoes that are upstairs. I bought a new pair of shoes. But anyway, keep talking. Yeah, so it's great for anti inflammatory and it helps with your respiratory system. Helps basically just reduce any kind of issue that may arise from cell regeneration. So like your skin, your eyes, your teeth, like your energy. I don't know. Like all, it helps everything. <laughs> like it says it helps. <laughs> even it says it helps with like your, your ATP synthesis with like your muscles. Like it really just helps with everything. How'd you come across it? And like, did you seek it out? What made you find it? So here I have, I'll use. This is basically the chart that I learned. I was looking and doing some research on telomeres and I was kind of going to ask the question, would you get telomere extensions? And I found this and I was like, oh, but like you can do something. Well, I first, the glycation, the glucose sugar binds and inhibits DNA and proteins. This is like just intermittent fasts, like caloric deficit, chronological, chronological age and risk factors like Kobe's helicopter, you can't do anything about telomere shortening. That's a DNA game maybe we could do that with like stem cells we'll see but like oxidative stress we can really just like take an antioxidant but we don't kind of the same way as like you could just work out and like not really have glycation be an issue and so yeah it, it became a thing of like keep the new engine new in terms of like your body and aging as opposed to like letting yourself try to like repair damage and so yeah getting ahead of it this is it it's uh the most Asta antioxidant Asta. right it's <laughs> five thousand times five thousand times more powerful than vitamin c so i would say a lot of it i take vitamin c and then vitamin D. Vitamin C is a part of my, my multivitamin, but I think vitamin D on its own. Um, it's fascinating. I think for one of the things that like I'm on the path of is like basically like it runs in my family. So I know it's inevitably there. And I also think that my lifestyle is conducive to it. Uh, basically getting some sort of dementia slash Parkinson scenario. Because, like, I mean, essentially, the more you multitask the brain, the more you're weakening it is really what it kind of comes down to. So I've been doing, like, a heavy amount of research around that of other foods and other vitamins and other pieces to be doing at a young age to, like, help fight that scenario. Um, this would help with that a lot, actually. Well, there we go. Send me a link, my guy. Yeah. I will. I'll be of anything. Shot. Yeah, I'm going to say, this is, like, more on the topical side. I have annihilated my shoulder rowing. Uh, I hope it's rowing. If it's not rowing, that means I did it in my sleep. She is really pathetic. Yeah. And like, I was talking to Lang yesterday, and he was like, he's like, just get you the CBD lotions, man, which I've never 
never done anything, but he's like, that's how I make it through every season is CBD lotions. He's like, just get some. I was like, all right. So I'm on a deep research. Perhaps you said you're from the Midwest, a little conservative. You've never tried the CBD oil? Uh, I mean, I've tried CBD in a different way, but not like straight oil. But like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just not or just like I've never had to, to do. Right. Yeah. No. Now I will. I've actually, I've never used it for like pain or like I had a sore something, but I've known a couple of people that have used it and use it quite often for that reason. You say that's awesome. Or just like joints and stuff, you know, like you yeah, play basketball exactly. at an older age and you put on your knees and shoulders and stuff like and elbows. It just like makes you feel a little better. Oh, yeah, it's that's my next great path with that of my medical. But I feel like I'm do you at this point. Do you ever get like massages or like go to a chiropractor? I don't do the chiropractor. I'm kind of anti-chiropractor, to be whoa, frank. Wait, 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 whoa, wait, 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 wait. You don't want to answer. Wait, so why why anti-chiropractor? Uh, because I think a lot of times, in my experience with people that use the chiropractor, it becomes a necessity and not a right. crutch. But you can use it as a tool. That's fair. I agree with that. Massaging, all on board with that. I could do it more. My wife is very good at like utilize. So my wife has her 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 spine is fused. So like she kind of has to navigate through a lot of this type of stuff. And uh, she is very good at using that as uh, I mean not only a stress relief but as that that extra element, that extra function to that piece, right? Um, she she. <laughs> See, like, I don't know, Blackbird has, like, a subscription at our, like, local places. She's like, you need to go do this once a month. I'm like, no, I'm good. I got other shit I got to get done. But no, I mean, we'll be taking advantage of this now because, like, my back is, my it's killing me. And I know that it will help. I do see, I'm a friend at home who is a physical therapist. And, like, he helps me put on, like, a better routine for stretching and stuff like that as I've aged into my running. I'll be visiting him here over Memorial Day to discuss like what I need to be doing my shoulder is really what it comes down to. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, yes. Well, like I really destroyed my shoulder playing baseball and my elbow a bunch of times. I eventually just like tore my rotator cuff. But the biggest thing that helped me was the chiropractor. Because so, yeah, I think if you use it as a tool, it's probably helpful, man. Yeah. Yeah, because like I could get like surgery on my shoulder. Like there's kind of stuff that's like not in the right place, but the chiropractor is really just like the alignment of it so that I can still like have the mobility like everywhere. Not be a pain. That was definitely well, I totally respect I, that view. Like, like sir. I don't know. Like I'm at a point where surgery to me is an interesting thing where it's like a lot of this stuff has become a scenario of like, but you can fix it. Got it. Understood. Is it a necessity? Can my life not, can I not live my life? Can I not do what I need to do? And that's not saying ignore things or anything like that, but like like, if you were to tell me today that I needed surgery on my shoulder, I probably would not, like, be hustling up to make it happen. If you were going to tell me it was something that's going to get worse if I don't do it, and, like, it, I don't know, it's a tumor or some shit like that. Yes. But if it's just something that's, like, nah, I can do this through a mile. If you get if you get a 40, you should get stem cells. That's what I would do. Well, that's, like, how Kobe extended his career, man. He was flying in Germany and shooting that stuff, like, right into his business. There's me. Yeah, you should, you yeah. shoot it. I would shoot it straight into my shoulder, and I feel like it would be fine. But I do want to share this last thing because this yeah. you said it'll help with the like you said your like the Parkinson's and all that in your family. Just so you can find it, and everybody that watches this can see like where to actually get it. As to actually pure energy. All right. Yeah. I'll send you the link, Rick. Yeah, I would. I would value that. Yes. 
I do feel like I'm getting to the point with the amount of pills I take. I'm gonna have like one of those like old people like pill, a little pill thing. Yeah. So you just gotta design a fire one so it doesn't. I didn't think about that. I was like, you know what? It can look cool. When right, it could look fire. <laughs> like Jerry, I remember listening. I remember listening to Jerry uh, did an interview uh, when he did his last uh, when he did the runway show, and he said the main driver of him creating. Um, I'm blanking on the name of it, but his basically like loafer, like with the open California. toes bait. Yeah, the California. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. he was like, I basically created that because I was sick of my kids wearing Crocs in my house. They were ugly and I hated the shape. <laughs> so I made new ones. <laughs> but like, oh, yeah. that's precisely it, it though. It's like your says, vision of no, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, to some extent, like, it's real arrogant, and I think it's hard to say it, but, like, a lot of the times, like, creative people, it's just because they hate what they see. Like, it's like, well, we can't, I mean, like, I think it's somewhat of, like, uh, it was funny, I was listening to a clip from said guru this morning, and he said something to the effect of uh, human beings, we enjoy, like, what s separates us from animals is we enjoy the aesthetic to the process that we're doing so like we could eat with our hands like all the time and just like scarf down food but like we like a certain sort of aesthetic and process and okay this is the way we're gonna do it i think that's what kind of just makes us human you know what i'm saying just like the the feeling of like oh i'm taking these pills but i don't want to feel like i'm an old person with the old with the plastic little thing, you know what I'm saying? It's just changing your environment to like match how you feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think it's just making yourself feel comfortable and good with what it is and making it feel like it's part of you, right? Like, That's why we design, you know what I'm saying? Create the things we want to see in the world. Totally, yes. I know you have other questions. I'll save it, but your your analogy of utensils for eating, I had an epiphany the other day of like, why do we need a fork? Tell me an actual food no, that you need. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. It's funny you said that. And it's funny I said that because I stopped eating my breakfast. I always make like bacon, two fried eggs, uh, and it's like either toast or croissant. And... Yeah. and I like stopped eating it with a fork because I would just like because it's a fried egg. I just tear the egg, tear off the bacon, and eat as like a little egg bacon little taco. And I just keep eating that, and then eat some bread, and then just have like a napkin. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, honestly, I don't need to be using all these utensils. But the only time that like I, that I, it's the only meal I've I've done it for. It's only been kind of an experiment. I, I wouldn't do it. The other day that like the if you use like a fork on like meat it's because you fucked up the meat you don't know how to like cook it properly and you've lost like all the tenderness and like you overdone it like if you're doing things that are probably we live in america though like where are you gonna get in like cook meat? like how many people are really cooking meat that just you can just you know like off the <laughs> but i was just sitting looking at it and i was like all right maybe like Maybe the fast food invention of the spork wasn't like a bad idea. It just got a bad terminology and bad rap to it because of what it was tied to. Where it's like, if you, I was in, there's a beautiful Japanese coffee shop like just down the road. And I was looking at there, they have these nice, like recyclable wooden utensils. And like, it's per, their, their, their plastic knife, like the serrated edges are just like perfect. And I was like, man, we applied that to that spoon. They wouldn't need anything else because a lot of times, even, even when I'm like buttering something, I'll use a spoon sometimes because I find it easier on the back side of it to just like smooth that out perfectly, especially if it's a delicate piece of bread. So I don't know, man. There's already oh, that idea that like, you only need a spoon. Just gonna say it. Just gonna say it. Yeah, I was gonna. I also had the thought recently of why I've ever eaten rice with a fork. Yeah. The dumbest thing I've ever tried to do. <laughs> they have like a soy sauce on it. It's fun, right? Yeah, or like, or like, uh, like rice with things in it, like fried rice with meat, broccoli, whatever. No reason why. But anyways, let's let's 
That's move on. We got on. Moving on. We got a better topic. All right. So tax law, because it was just taxes. I don't talk about this. And from the perspective of like owning a business versus being an employee versus anything versus paying a lot of tax, not paying tax, thoughts, understandings on tax law. Well, this is a passionate conversation of mine of, um, I, you know, it's, it's actually, there's so much I went, I went from real anger there in my head to like real deep American culture. Like it went full 360 as like a whole right there in my own mind. Uh, a, it's a learning process. Uh, B, what is frustrating about it is how much of a game like it actually is and uh and it's like it's about your knowledge and knowing how you can and who you work with and how you learn from what's crazy about like taxes and many other things in america is it shows you just how individual of a society we are because nobody really there's very few people that really teach you how to do any of this stuff you have to find a mentor through it you have to find your own way through it and it's just there's just something about it where it becomes it's like don't they don't nobody wants somebody else to know it's just an odd conversation in America. Let's tell everybody how do you have the answers, bro? Have you found? Uh, I have answers that are starting to work for me. I think I've done a pretty good job with it over the past decade. I am by no means perfect, and I'm constantly searching and learning. Um, you but pay taxes for your business. Uh, yes. It, so what you have to realize is that like, this is my, this will be my second full year of being truly only independent. So that comes into that factor. Um, but the other part of it would be the real conversation I think needs to be had to that is if you're independent is determining if you're going to do S court versus LLC. That's really the biggest conversation that you have and how you pay yourself out and what do you do with it. Talk about it. Yeah. Yep. So for me, I've been LLC for the longest time and it's now shifted to S Corp is, is where it's at now. Yeah. Yeah. We did that transition not too, not too long ago, not too recent, but not too long ago either. Did you keep it in the States you're in? Yes. So I found it because I'm not in New York. <laughs> 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 no yeah i founded it in new jersey and we no so the macro of the tax to me is like it's a government game to incentivize private social wealthy meaning the government is incentivizing all of the private citizens to own companies get together with other people and provide things that the government would otherwise and you can get breaks for if you provide things that the government would otherwise jobs land energy food etc and so the game becomes like with a business i think is ebit is understanding that like ebit ebit though how there's an order to things just like PEMDAS and regular math. There's an order to how things get subtracted in business. Whereas like you're an employee, you get paid this money. That's that. But as a business, like your top line revenue is not what you get taxed on. You get taxed on your net. And so a company like Amazon can make a hundred billion dollars top line revenue and take out a billion dollar loan and be neg and be net negative and not pay taxes and people say oh jeff bezos blah 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 food energy the value of amazon to society you know what i mean and so that's the game and really even a small business can do it and like we figured this out where even if you make ten thousand dollars top line you just figure out how to expense it through the business before the net because there's no reason for the company to make money and that was another one of these things where it's like capitalism doesn't need employees but like businesses shouldn't make money that's not their function 
their function is to provide the service, good value, whatever it is to society. So let's make up a, a hypothetical situation. All right, so 10,000 is a good number, right? 10,000 is a, that's a relatively simple independent contract that you would get from someone, right? If you have a bunch of money. How would you spend that on the business? All right, so you as an independent creative, that $10,000 is your income for doing the project. How do you maintain income, but then also spend it? Does that make sense? Yeah, so first of all, what you pay yourself and everybody else is an expense of the business, first off. Like, then anything that you pay to do business is basically an investment in the business, but also an expense. So like, if you want to buy a new computer, if you want to buy new materials to make your new designs, if you want to do any of that stuff or, and then pay yourself, all of that is subtracted from that top line 10 K. Which then changes how, especially if you're on an S corp side of things, because they can change just how you're essentially taxed at the end of the day, right? You should, yep. you should always be able to net zero as the business. And as an S corp, you integrate payroll taxes when employees as just an LLC, you can be taxed as a partnership and right. mitigate that. Yes, it has been an interesting learning because like in our house, we're both entirely independent contractors. And I think the other portion that ties into this conversation is health insurance too. Like it's uh health insurance is another like similar game of this stuff. If you're truly, and I, it's, yeah, I, if you're, if you're healthy, like health insurance isn't as like big of a thing, but like if you're unhealthy, I also think that that's what keeps you tied to like a corporation and other pieces like that. The fear of having to pay for the medical bills and those other pieces. But what we've learned like through this process is like, all right, so I technically other a portion of my independent contracting. I work for my wife's business and stuff like that. And that's essentially how we do the health insurance side of it. And then it goes as a business cost for her, which at the end of the day, I mean, is a way is the way that a lot of the a lot of people do it. And it's why you structure for your family to be honest like that should be goals like it was the best way of doing it because like for us like i would have went independent probably five probably like 2018 19 area i definitely would have went at that point but that was like the main conversation and nobody teaches you that shit like nobody knows no they don't they don't so tell them you mean me <laughs> It's like, I was just lucky that I had a phenomenal relationship with my, my CPA from, and like, he just helped guide me through this stuff. He's like, he's like, just work for Stacy. And because your wife is such a wonderful employer, she gives you the best health insurance that then also covers you, your children and her. It's like, it, it's, it's as simple as that. And it's like, you go and navigate that stuff. Nobody teaches you that stuff. Nobody finds that stuff out. And it's like, that isn't gaming the system. It's just the part of the, this is what it is. No, it's yeah. playing the game. No, it's playing the game to yeah. win. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably the big change. I mean, the other stuff that people don't talk about too, that they'll tie you into it is like the idea of a 401k, right? Depending on what you make in America, like you can take, it depends on what your tax bracket is, but the highest you can put out is about 61.6, like 61,600 into a SEP IRA. Every year, you can put 61,600 into it. And, you know, if you go off of, like, for my average age, most, I think I dodged thread a few weeks ago, the average person my age, I think, has somewhere around 75 and 85,000 in 401k at this point. And, like, what that usually comes with on top of that is most people putting somewhere between three and 6% in out of their paycheck. And then they have a company match that usually falls in between that number as well. So that gets them to somewhere between nine and 12% is what they're putting away of their 401k. Do the fucking simple math on that, man. That's going to keep you in work until at least 
at least 65 or 66 years old, like at a minimum. And that's assuming that you never have some sort of hardship and you have to take a lump sum right. out of that. to take a, right, ever. Right, ever. And like that, that is becoming few and far between for most Americans at a simple, a simple part to it. And it's like, when you sit and look at it that way, it's like, man, you go independent, you'll save so much more, so much quicker. Like, it's just as simple as that. Tell us about your chart here. It's beautifully colored. Yeah, no, this is one of the best learning devices I've found. This aisle, aisle thing. This is net worth 10K to a billion and portfolio. And it's colored based on like the dark blue, our business interests. Green is liquid, red is primary residence. You see how it changed fast thing and they went to the higher. But yeah, it's bro. like it's a mindset though, because you can have this portfolio, you can structure this portfolio with a hundred K or ten K. You know what I mean? It's so it's very eye opening. Cause you were just talking about like retirement like this section, the, the yellow and see how that changes as it grows. Same thing you're saying, like insurance. The biggest shocker to me was primary residence. Thanks. Uh, explain real quick. So I think primary residence, like obviously you have more money, it'll be like maybe more of an insignificant thing but i think if you see the billionaires they don't value real estate nearly as much as the i guess poor yeah. classes and so i feel like the mindset of this portfolio is more likely to be renting a 50k penthouse than owning and buying and having a hundred million dollar mortgage and putting that money into the business interests and a mindset of this portfolio I as opposed to like the 100k people who probably bought a two million dollar house on credit well they probably bought they're makes so that's saying 100k is what they're making yearly right or is that what they have in yeah this is not work at work oh okay so my take, yeah, well then, yeah, you might be accurate. I think there's a few things to it. There, there's like the psychology, this hits the tangible of like hard data, but then there is the psychology of it that's not discussed of like the mentality of like what you're brought up, where it's like not just brought up by parents or, or culturally or anything, but just like what, what, what you're taught to like go and figure out to do in school. And it's like for most people, if you're not brought up in that 10 million and below, you're taught to keep striving for better. So as you're at your 10K, it's like, all right, you've got that that house of like two bedrooms. You're like, oh, that's really nice. And then you grow it and it's like, oh shit, well now we need a bigger house, family grew. And then it kind of becomes this thing of like where, where you're constantly taught to be looking for like what's next. So at some point, what I believe separates basically 100 from 1M and then 1M to 10M is if you decide at that, like at those first chivalry, those two points, like the 100K or the 1M, if you decide at that mentality that you still need to be experiencing what's next, you will never get to 10 or 100 or 1. And that's because you're constantly replacing it with physical shit that doesn't matter. And it's like at some point when you hit somewhere between 1 and the 1M and the 1B, when I see from those that you're able invisible to assets, that's a good thing. Exactly. Right? It's like you're able to take it for granted. You're always going to be able to afford a house. You're always going to be able to afford what it is. So it's like you you can like take it for granted in a healthy way where it enables you to go further because you're like, no, I can always go backwards and do that. But I can now. Uh, it's like it's like you're basically saying it's like under like somewhere like between a million and one billion is like you you escape the survival mindset of right. the lower 
class of income. Yeah. And you are then be able to be in straight creator mindset and just like make the most fire things possible, which will then give you outsized returns. Yeah. And I really do believe everybody's journey is different. Everybody has outsets that you have to overcome and what it is. And, but there is a mentality of this that is as simple as that. It is a mentality of making choices. Like, and you have to, because I sit around as usual, I'm like, like what? Continue to come right? It's all choice. It's all choice based. Yeah. Every single, single all thing. of these, all of these callers use your choices. We'll drop this in the chat. Yeah, this is, this, oh, is, this is great for us. And the other thing I just wanted to say real quick is you said intangible assets as like the net worth increase because business interests like this is where people are literally cash poor like their net worth is a billion but like they literally only have like 10k in their bank account because all of their money is in 500,000 shares at this company that ipo that they haven't liquidated you know what i'm saying and they don't even and that money that multiple that moic multiple of invested capital is higher in private equity and business interests than in real estate by far, then by stocks, then by income. And so that's why people play the game. But it takes until people start making 10 mil plus to even understand, oh, this is the game I need to play. But that's the last thing I'll yeah. say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. <laughs> by Kanye West, ever actually owned his own shoe company. Uh, okay. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Talk no, about wait, it. real. Because to talk about it, I looked at Kanye and I was like, I'm going to not make the same mistake. I felt like if he started Yeezy at college dropout, Yeezy doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? And well, that's it. But I right, think. And so I was like, let me do that as a creative and figure out, combine the business with the art and make that like an athlete having speed and power i think that's what's always driven me crazy about it like i'm i'm i work with people with few and far less amount of money to start companies and you just have to do it like you're gonna tell me that he didn't have look if the three of us really wanted to be aggressive and like do our own shoe company right swear. now i would tell us swear so I had the fucking answer. You need like 350 to 375 access to it just to get the first drop out. And then past that, it's like going to go off your volume of what you want to do. But man, like, stop buying a fucking G wagon stop, and making houses like right. entirely out of cement. Literally. And like, stop, you know, he has zero, bro. Stop paying taxes and that's zero. Right. <laughs> man, it's just nuts. <laughs> Like, it's like you, for being as creative as, and it, and it probably comes down Create your own media company and, like, protect your own freaking, like, come on, hey, bro. You're, you're right. I, I, he I, he got with the Kardashian, yeah. but no, no, no. He was like, I'm going to fuck it with the Kardashian Productions, and we're going to make him a lot of money, but he hey, hey, foresee hey, all of the... i at the Lakers home game. No, hey. Facts. Jerry pulled up too. Facts. Yeah. I'm just saying he he chose. We talk about choices. He chose Kardashian Productions. You know what I'm saying? He could have created his own media company, created his own story, all of that. And so yeah, I really that's the answer though is like the ownership of it because like yeah. the business interest. It's like well, then it comes down to should I own my own business interests or own other people's business interests? And it's like both but like bet gamble more on yourself if you're gonna take those bets that's how i feel but that's exactly what it is and all of that stuff is really how comfortable you are as a person and what you believe you are capable of truly no, it's not comfortable i don't know no 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 i don't agree with that at all what's virtue what needs to be done what needs it's to be done is driven by self-worth so quick to self work and other pieces of that self awareness because like everything that you're tying to me is what I made my comfortable. I'm comfortable of taking the of risk myself. I'm because I have self awareness of knowing when 
I fail and when I don't. Does that make sense? 100%. No, you choose what's comfortable within the scope of what needs to be done, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that cops yes. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to say. So, like, again, going off the billions point, I think it's last segue. You said you have a, you have an 11, right? I do. I just got texted yeah. a link, actually. But you need to cut that. All right, so we'll stop. We'll stop there. We'll pick it up. Uh, we have some. We'll talk more about how to spend billions next time. I want to know how. That's how. how we want to come with how would you spend a billion dollars? So let's. We'll come with that next. Time. How would you deploy that level of wealth? We'll come with that next time. All right. I'm gonna do some homework. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right, gentlemen. Have a great day. All right, you too, man. Peace.